Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna add a few features based on the previous project part 8. This is gonna be interesting. Let's begin. Before we start, I'm gonna show you how to make the package JSON file if it's missing like my case. If there is no packaging JSON file in the project you downloaded from the GitHub, please do this way. This is the easy way to make a package JSON file for the project. In the console, go to the root folder of the project, execute uh, npm init. We are making this file to add the dependency libraries, so let's skip all the questions. If we need to put the specific information in the package JSON file, then add it. The package JSON file was created. Checking the content, I can see that it contains the library information used in my project. Let's learn the source code of the previous project. The server is up and running. Let me turn on the two cams. Cam 2 is connected and looking at the door of the office. Now Cam 1 is connected too. It's looking at my uh, MacBook. This is what I uh, worked on in the previous project, right? I'm going to show you how it laid out overall. This is my monitor, which is connected to my MacBook. This is a Cam 1, and it's looking at the MacBook side. And this is a Cam 2, which is connected to the power only. It's also directing to the office door. OK, let's try to add the play and pause buttons first. This function is simply to allow or prevent the incoming image from being updated to the specific image tag. I'm going to explain again why I'm adding source code. First, we need a button. This button has the class for applying the style sheet. Uh, I will add it later. We need to set the ID of this button to find out which button generates the event. And enter the name and parameter of the function to run when it's clicked. This button will have two text, play and pause. When the web client starts, uh, show the play button so that uh, the play string appears first in the button to uh, allow the image to be updated. Uh, let's copy and paste the button tag we just made on the second camera. Please don't forget to change the ID and parameters of the function call. Create a variable in the window that can store the state of each camera. This is an explicit way to refer to global variables. Uh, the initial value of each camera is forced, and the play button must be pressed to update to a new image. Now let's create a function for the button. Because the ID value of the current button has been entered as a parameter, using this, this button can be found within this document. If the current text of the found button is play from cam1, change it to pause and change the value of the cam1 enabler in the window to true. Let's also add the opposite case. Go to the WebSocket message part in the script. Uh, I modified this part from the previous source to a single line, but I will change it to the if else statement if because there is more work to be done. Uh, check the value of the uh, cam1 enabler in the window variable and return it if it's not true. Uh, this will now update the image. Let's see how this button works. Restart the server. I can see there is a play button each. I press the play button to update the image and press the pause button to the stop the image. Uh, it works as intended. Uh, the Button is not a pre because the star seed is not applied yet. Let's add it now. Also, you can download the updated star seed from my project GitHub. I just copy and paste it from my GitHub too. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, it's much better than before. That's good. It looks more functional even I just added one button. Oh cool. The play and pause buttons are nothing but it can be very useful for some use cases. The next feature I will add is showing the status of live. 
As you know, due to the bottlenecks, it may delay incoming images from ESP32 cam. Here I want to do is to make sure the current image is coming in properly. Go to the text cam1. I'm going to add live text at the end of the cam1. Let's simply add the red dot using a span tag. You need to register the class name since the red dot will be drawn from the search sheet. Uh, additionally, I set the visibility of this one to hidden because when it starts, we don't know it has the incoming images from the server. Make came to text the same as what we just worked on. Let's talk about turning red dot on and off. We can easily see images coming in through a web socket. However, there is no way to know that image data is not coming in. So the easiest way I'm suggesting is to use timer to turn up red dot every second. And when the image comes in, it turns on red dot. This allows you to see if the current image is live with a gap of the one second. Coding is simple. Creates a function that turns off and set interval this function to run every second. Go to the WebSocket message part in the script. When the image comes in, change the corresponding red dot is visible. It'll work fine. Uh, finally, add the style to the style sheet. That's it. Let's restart the server and see how it looks like. Let me open my browser again. Yes, it looks like blinking LED. Because of the timer, it turns off, but suddenly showing up again. Nice. By pressing the play button, I can see the incoming image from the server. Cool, this is what I want. Uh, from this picture, uh, we can figure out there is an incoming image from each camera or not. It's gonna be useful for the web client side. The last feature I'm gonna add is save to image file to the local. I'm sure you know what I'm trying to do, right? Uh, let's implement it. First, we have to make another button next to the play button. I just copy and paste the play button and change the button's ID, the parameters of uh, function's call, and function's name. Also, uh, set the name of the, this button to the save to image. Change this color to the right blue because the button is colored red. Uh, it's done for the first one. Uh, copy and paste into the second camera. After copy and paste, don't forget to change the ID and parameters. Let's make a save function. In this function, the most important thing is getting a blob URL from each image tag. Without it, we cannot save it to the JPT file. To verify the blob URL exists, make sure the blob keyword is included in the URL. If it's not included, it, return it to uh, exit the function. After getting the blob URL, we will stop the camera so that the blob URL can no longer be updated. This code calls HTTP GET method internally using XML HTTP request creates a A tag in the document for download. It makes it easy to download the blob URL as an image. A file name is required when saving the file. Create a formatted time function to return the current time, so you can simply put the current time in the file name. Return to save function and call the function we created to obtain the file name. I put the current camera information in the cam info to find out which camera this image comes from. And then call the force download function with blob URL and file name. I just removed the meaningless lines, didn't touch anything. Let's restart the server and see how it looks like. Uh, the blinking LED looks like welcoming me, and press the play button to see the live images. Uh, I want to take a picture of my hand. Click the save to image button, uh, but nothing happens. 
It just goes to change to the pause status because I put the code to stop the cam while saving the image. But it's weird. Oh, I got the image file now. I think this weird action is that blob URL is there, but it doesn't include the blob object. I see. We need to fix it. Sometimes it works fine, but sometimes not. This is not enough. Let's go back to the code and fix it. I'm gonna change the current logic, which is pausing cam while making an image file. Let me remove the bottom function. A single URL object variable temporarily stored blob images of both cameras. I will save these edges variables. It's gonna be URL object 1 and 2. Go to the end of the script. Change the image from each camera so that it can be stored separately on the URL object. The reason for this is to save the URL of the previous image and release it from memory if there is a new image. The same applies to the cam to image. We are set, uh, let's restart the server to see how it works. Regardless of the current state of the cam, you can save it as a file at any time if the image exists. I think this method is very intuitive and effective. It works very fast and you can see it working well. I hope you will add more functions to improve your project based on this. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.